Hey, this is Mikey Borup, and I'm here with another After Effects tutorial. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below in the comment section. Now, recently, a friend of mine named Nathan Lee asked me to do some compositing work on a film that he was working on. This film is called Resistance Movement, and you can go check it out at resistancemovementmovie.com or just follow the link in the description. Now, in the scene, as you can see here, there is the actor and he's on a black background. And he wanted me to take out the black background and put in this kind of this gray background that looked like cement. The rest of the shots were shot that way and they thought they wanted this on a black background. In post-production they decided, you know what, we want this on the cement background and he says, hey, can you do that? And I'm like, well, I know After Effects. That means I can do that. So I jumped right in, and I quickly discovered it was quite difficult. I first tried, like, a Luma key or just, uh, you know, just different composite modes. I couldn't get it right because his hair was so dark and his eyes were so dark in there. And then I tried the Roto Brush, which... It's kind of a hit and miss. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. And this time it, I just could not get it and I was just pulling my hair out trying to figure out how to do a nice clean key, bring out that black background. And then I figured it out. I was trying anything I could and I threw on a filter. And let's do that now. Effect, color correction, shadow highlight. Now, this filter looks like crap basically is what it does it makes your footage look like really horrible HDR and I look at that and I'm like oh but I also noticed that the black in the hair was made a nice edge it wasn't black anymore and so I'm like you know what I can work with this I can use the rotor brush with this and be able to make a nice roto so let me show you how I did that let's take this off first thing you're gonna to want to do is take the top layer if you've got footage like this it may work it may not work for you but I took the top layer I duplicate it on that top layer I'm going to add the shadow highlight filter and then I'm going to take that and pre-compose it so command shift C on a Mac let's give this a label roto mat Okay, so this has the filter applied into it in this pre-comp. The one below it does not, and the one below that is the background. So I'm going to turn the mute off that one so we don't have two audio channels. Now, from here, I'm going to use the roto brush. And if you haven't used the roto brush, try it out. So it's this up here. It's called the, the roto brush. I'm going to click on that. And then when I have that selected, I'm just going to double click, make sure that this is highlighted, and it brings me into the Roto Brush painting area. You want to make sure that you're at the very beginning of your clip that you want to work on because it works kind of like the tracker where you have to go each frame at a time. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely paint my character. And you can see automatically it, it really finds the edges quite well. And then some of these places up here that it didn't, I can come in here and get a better, a better um, mat. Okay. And I'm not going to be too perfect because I don't need to be. So then from here, I'm just going to hit spacebar and it'll start to follow my mat and go through there. Now I'm starting to notice up here some bad stuff going on. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use my page up and page down will we'll go through your frames. So right there, if I hold down Option, my rotor brush right now is green with a plus. If I hold down option, it turns it red with a minus. And you guess it, it subtracts. So now then I, I can move forward a frame and it'll kind of 
reframe things, recalculate the roto brush. Basically, you have to do this through the entire clip. It's a lot more difficult than, you know, a green screen, but it can be done. Another thing you want to pay attention to is it's really hard to see, but there's this kind of this gray ribbon down there, and that's how far it'll calculate the roto brush. As soon as it gets to here, well, it's going to just stop. You can see this purple line is just now out there. So I don't know why it doesn't just automatically roto the whole clip, but when you first start, you have to go in here and just hover on the edge, and you can see my double arrow, and just take that and drag it to the end. And that way, it'll continue to calculate through the end. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing just for time's sake, but I'll do the beginning here. And it's really just the same process to go through the whole thing, make sure there's the edges seem nice, and go through that. Okay, that's the first step. So let's go back to my main composition. Now I've got this layer hidden and that layer hidden. So you can see that what the roto brush did was it automatically cut out the background. But look at those edges. It doesn't look very nice. And I've got this hideous filter on here that makes it look like really bad HDR. So how do I take care of that? Well, let's use a track mat. So this layer that's below it that has the proper lighting is what I want to show through, but I want the alpha channel from this to come through. And so a track mat is kind of like a cookie cutter. So if I go into, there's this toggle switches modes, make sure it's on the modes. And I go to this layer that I want to show through, I go to track mat, it just says T-R-K-M-A-T, and I click on alpha mat roto mat. What this is going to do is it's going to use the roto mat layer and it's going to take the alpha channel from it and apply it to this layer. And you can see that did it. It just like cut it out like a cookie cutter. So that's the next step. I turn the background on and it's starting to look there. It's starting to be there. But the edge is still really not that great. So let's work on that edge. So first thing I want to do is come in here and let's adjust these matte settings. So let's bring the smooth up to 5, feather about to 40. Let's bring that choke up to 80. And what you can see it did is it, it smoothed it and it feathered it and it choked it in. So now that edge, that black edge that was there before, you can see it. is gone. But what else is also gone is some of the detail. So let's figure out how to bring those back. Now if I just, just as it is as a quick mat and a quick background replacement, that's pretty good. But let's see if we can bring in some of those details. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this top layer, the one that looks like crap, I'm going to duplicate that and bring it to be below the main layer and above the background. And on this, I'm going to now turn off the rotor brush or I'll just delete it completely. Make sure that it's visible. And this now is on the background. And you can see the highlight on the neck is back. Some of the details in the hair are back. But we've got this weird kind of this fringe, this light fringe going around, and the background is now gone. But what I have, let's just solo this background layer, is that background is almost black. So if I go into my modes and go to screen, it's going to remove the black and just leave the light. But the background wasn't pure black, so let's fix that with a curves adjustment. Color correction curves. And I'm going to just grab this bottom and bring it over until that background just eliminates. And I want to see if I can keep some of the some of the hair and different things like that. Just all the noise I want to be gone. Okay, about right there. At the same time, this background 
doesn't quite match the foreground. So let's adjust the curves a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. It seems to blend in quite well. And as you can see, if I turn that on and off, it really adds in some of these little highlights, the detail around the ear, highlight right there on the suspenders on the back of the neck quite well. And of course, feel free to then add a new adjustment layer and let's add a color correction on top of that. So it's a little bit too yellow. So let's add some blue, maybe some green. Go the RGB. Okay, so I like that. So that is kind of an advanced black background removal um, using the highlight and shadow filter to be able to then use the roto brush. So I hope that this After Effects tutorial using the roto brush and some of the filters and compositing techniques for After Effects really helped out. Um, it's not a full look tutorial, it's just a tip um, that you can now apply to your own projects. So if you have any questions, please, please feel free to uh, put them in the comments below. Also, if you've got your own After Effects videos or your own After Effects channel that you want me to check out or other people check out, feel free to post links to that in the comments as well. And I would love to go see what you guys have to offer, what you guys are doing. And um, yeah, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And so I can continue to make these great After Effects tutorials. Thanks.